So today I want to talk about image classification with ArcGIS. And what I'm going to show you today is how to classify a Landsat image uh, to make a land cover map. Uh, so first, what's Landsat image? If you go to a Landsat Looks webpage, you can kind of get an idea of what a Landsat image is. But um, if you go here, these are basically images taken, uh, taken from space. And, uh, and they have multi-bands. And what's cool about them is that you can get some pretty good images of the Earth. Uh, and the newest Landsat, you can get it like eight bands. Uh, but older Landsats, you have like seven bands. And with those images, you can do things that are pretty cool, like classify images. So if I look here, for example, I can just visually see that I have things like forest. I have things here like agriculture. I have some water bodies. And I have here maybe some kind of a small urban or at least suburban area. And so what... I'm doing right now is I'm looking at this land cover and I'm thinking, oh, okay, what is the land use that's happening there? And I'm classifying it just quickly saying, okay, here's a forest, here's agriculture. We can actually get the computer to do that for us by sampling parts of the image and saying what they are. And then afterwards, the computer's algorithms and ArcGIS can go through and classify them into different land cover types depending on what we choose and so for example we can get something like this where we can see this study area having the uh, original uh, image right here but then you have here just this is just comparing different types of classification methods but you can see here that you can have these covers that we can use to measure how much area we have for example is urban or how much area is pasture how much area is water this can be useful useful whenever you do time analysis but anyways, let's see how we can uh, do this. Let's go ahead and close these all up. But if you want to get an image, um, go ahead and go to Landsat Look Viewer. And then from there, you can find an image. Um, and what you want to do is download one of the images for your study area. So I went ahead and downloaded an image. And the image I downloaded uh, was for Redlands, California. And if you look here, uh, with images that you download from Landsat, uh, look, they come in multiple bands. So you can see here, I have this TIFF for band 1, this TIFF for band 2, this TIFF for band 3. Each one of those are just a single a single uh, image band. And you can see here what's going on. Uh, but basically, it just represents one color uh, that's, ha that's happening there. So here, this would be the blue color, the green color, the red color. And then we can start going into infrareds, for example and start seeing what's happening on the infrared band. But um, that's not very useful for ArcMap. What's useful is whenever you use the MTL. And so if I open this up, you can see what it is. But basically, it's just a text file here, an uh, MTL file, that ArcMap will use to add in the data and compile those bands into one single image, because these are truly all just one single image. So you see here, like, it's going here, and it's finding the different images and putting them together into one single image. And so let's go into ArcMap so we can see a little bit better. But all these images here that you're seeing here, if I go into ArcMap now, I'm going to go ahead and hit Add Data. And remember whenever you do Add Data, you have to always connect to your folder. And so for example, I have my desktop connected. And then I go to Image Class. That's my folder where I put everything. And so here I have my Landsat image. And so you see here, I can see each individual band, but at the same time that MTL, look at it now, how it shows up. It shows up as an image that says a raster, and it has a little satellite even across it. And when I add that one into ArcMap, what's cool about it is that it compiles those bands. And you can see here, like red, green, and blue um, show up, and this would be your natural color image uh, for an area. And so if I go into the um, properties here, I have options under the uh, symbology to start changing them around. And you can see here the names of the other bands, near-infrared, near-infrared 2, and, of course, mid-infrared. So <clears throat> this is what the Landsat image looks like. You can see here that it's kind of at an angle. This is because the path of the satellite uh, puts a little bit of angle. And so what ends up happens with the georectification process is that you take the image and you rotate it to north, and then you end up with these black kind of box bands right here. Those are easy, those are actually possible to get rid of with ArcMap by going into the layer properties. And under layer properties under symbology tab, 
you have the ability to look down and say display as a background value RGB. We know that the RGB value of 000, 000 is black, and so whenever I click on that 000, 000 and I say display as nothing, no color, I can actually get rid of some of those black uh, bands and get a better looking uh, image. Um, so like I was saying in this lab, I wanted to use uh, the spatial analyst extension to uh, use image classification. So I'm going to want to make sure I go into uh, customize extensions and make sure that I have the spatial analyst extension checked on. That turns on that license. So remember, go to customize extensions. That turns on that license and allows you to go and actually do image classification. If I go now here into the gray space, and open that up, I can see that there's an image classification toolbar. So I bring that up, and here now I have the ability to do <clears throat> image classification. So the toolbar basically is used to create training samples and signature files. Once you have your signature file, that's going to be used to identify what category each pixel goes into. And so the algorithm uses that signature file to do the classification. So you have to make uh, the signature file if you plan on doing a supervised classification. There's also options for unsupervised classification, but at least today we're looking at supervised classification, which means that we actually go through and train the algorithm to, uh, recon to recognize the different categories to our likings. Unsupervised, it will go through and just categorize them based off of of groupings, its own groupings that it makes just by number of, of categories you choose. So just a little tour of the image classification toolbar. You have here the uh, training sample drawing tool. Here you can use this to draw polygons that will make your uh, to make your training uh, file. So I can just go here and click for example and make polygons. Um, if I go into my training sample manager that allows me to go and select files, rename, uh, select polygons, rename them, and even delete them. So I get the delete button, and they go away. Go away, for example. <clears throat> um, once you're in here, you have some options too to group the polygons. We're going to look at that. Check out the scatter plots, and of course, create signature files. And then finally, once you get your signature file, you go through here, and you're going to go ahead and do one of these classification methods to classify your image. So in my Classification, I'm planning on working in a study area, so I have my area of interest, my AOI. If I click OK, I just have a box basically where I'm planning on working. You can limit your, your uh, work into a study area and then later on even process just that area. So that way you can um, save your time some effort uh, whenever you're processing later on, instead of processing the whole image, for example. And so since this is the area that I'm interested in that I want to do, um, it's going to be important that uh, I try to take my trainings in this area as well because that's going to help uh, the classification be better. Each area is going to have unique signatures, so you want to create a signature for that area. So I'm planning on using six classes, forest, water, grassland, agriculture, residential, and commercial industrial. And so first let's go with um, residential. Why not? That sounds like fun. And so if I zoom in on, for example, an area that I would consider a residential area, I can see that this image is a little bit hard to read. Um, that's just because of the lower resolution that the Landsat images are. Um, from this area, from this level, I can kind of see that it looks pretty clear, but as soon as I get in a little bit, it starts blurring out quite quickly and it becomes a little bit hard to uh, look at what's going on. Uh, one option is that you know you can go here and add a base map and then with the base map you can use um, aerial imagery to help you look cl more clearly what's going on here. What's nice is the aerial imagery is higher, uh, higher um, spatial resolution because those are going to be something like one meter or one foot. Um, but on the ones from space, we have things from 30 meters typically, and so 30 meters is a lot lower resolution than one meter. That you know, that's easy to say, but the one from space though has a higher spectral resolution. It's going to have um, eight bands, while the aerial images only have three bands. And so for image classification, spectral resolution is also very important. So I'm just waiting here for this base map to add. Okay, so my base map added. If I turn off this, for example, I can see the difference. It's quite um, amazing, the difference between 
the resolution of aerial image versus satellite image. And so if I can go here and use this to help me determine what's residential. Like for example, this was not residential, this was commercial. But on the, uh, the Landsat image, it might be hard to tell because of the blurriness. And so if I go through here and I just make sure that the Landsat image has about the same land cover going on as the, the aerial image, I can use the aerial image to uh, do my training sample. The thing that you have to be careful about is that things change over time. And so, for example, here I have residential, and I know that I want to do a training file here that says this is residential. What makes it residential and land cover? Well, one thing is that if I look closely, it is a kind of a mix between forest or you know trees, concrete, housing roofs, and those things are going to give it a, a very particular residential uh, residential signature. And so, if I go back to my study area and zoom to it, I want to get six of these residential areas. And I can see that this residential area might look a little bit different than this one over here. So I'm going to zoom in over here and check out this one and say, okay, I want to do another training sample here. Check on and off the uh, Landsat image just to make sure that nothing major has changed over the time. You can see here, for example, these retention ponds here are, are full in the Landsat image while they're not in the aerial image. So you want to make sure the same thing going on. And so here, for example, is another pretty good area for residential. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to trace out a residential block. Again, whenever I'm clicking my polygon, I double click to finish it off. And I keep on doing this um, six times. And it doesn't really matter so much about having good distribution or, you know, actually doing a very good job classifying it. It's just that the stuff that's within that polygon needs to be residential. That's what's the most important aspect of it. Um, it's not, you're not actually going through and, and making any map right now. Um, you're not digitizing, like for example, a neighborhood. You're just saying that everything within this polygon is residential. And so I want to do that a good six times at least. Um, the more you do, the better. That's just the, the simple rule of it all. The more you give the, the the algorithm, uh, something to use to train on, um, it's going to actually do a better job. And so here, for example, I'll just make sure those things are the same. They are, so that's good news. And I just go through here, and I just keep on making my residential ones. And you can see that these neighborhoods have very different types of neighborhoods going on. You can imagine a classification scheme where you just care about residential. Maybe you're going to actually say, uh, you know, different types of residential, single family homes, multifamily homes, suburban. You can even do something like that. But in this case, we're just doing general, really broad general category of residential. So you can see here I have a bunch of polygons can be made of residential areas. Okay, and so once I keep on adding all these, I can go to my training sample manager, and you can see here, it put them all into their separate classes, but I know that these are all residential. And so I wanna click on all the different classes that I have by just shift clicking to the very bottom. They selects them all, and then I say merge, and this is gonna merge all the training samples into one. And then here now I know that this is residential, so I can go and type in residential. And so now I've done a good sample for residential. And now I want to move on. I want to do forest, water, all the different types of classifications that I plan on doing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And um, I'm going to pause the, the recording so you don't have to watch me do so many of them. Okay, so now I've gone through and I've done all these classes. You can see residential, forest, water, grassland, agriculture, commercial, and industrial. And you can see here the different areas that I have. And then, for example, if I click on commercial industrial, uh, you'll see that those get selected here. And the gray is a little bit hard to read. Um, so let's switch it over to a um, orange. And so here you can see them now. Um, so and then if I go and click on agriculture, you can see where the agricultures are or grasslands. And so these are, again, these are just ones that I selected myself. So I, this is my training. Now what I want to do is I want to create a signature file for each one of these categories that would be used later to classify the rest of the study area.
And so for, for one thing that I can do is I can click on all these and check my scatter plots. This is very important to make sure that everything shows up on the scatter plots um, clearly because this is what's going to be used afterwards to make your um, training training sample. I don't know why this isn't working. Just give me a second. Oh, but before we do that, let's do something that's very important. Let's um, save these training samples that we did because this is something that you don't want to lose is the training samples. So if you click on save training samples here, you can go to your um, folder that you've been working on and save here your training samples. So I can put here um, training samples. This is nice because once you start, once you clear them out, they can go, you can lose them because it's all being saved temporarily right now. Okay, so once you have your training and your sample saved, go ahead and select all of your um, bands, all, all of your categories, and make sure that your, you know, of course your target is the multispectral. But once you select all those and you have that target as multispectral, if you click on Show Scatter Plots, that's going to bring up these scatter plots here. And so what you want to see with the scatter plots, I'm oh, sorry. What you want to see with the scatter plots is good separation between the different types of pixels, because um, because this is how it's going to be able to see the differences. And so you want to see here, for example, not a lot of mixing between, for example, greens and grays. So you can see here this dark green is really hanging out here on infrared, while this gray over here is hanging out in its own category. You don't find a lot of mixing going on between infrared versus blue versus green versus blue, red versus blue, you see nice separations. If you're seeing something, um, especially in these bands down here that are all mixed up, and you're going to see something down here with some of the lower bands, like mid-infrared versus blue, you're starting to see a little bit, but it's actually really great separation that's happening all across the board um, here. If I keep going down, you can see some good example of maybe something that's more mixed up, like here, infrared versus mid-infrared, or infrared it's near infrared 2 versus mid infrared if you're seeing something that's more mixed up like this in a blue versus like green these categories maybe you miscategorize something you want to see good separations here so if your training sample has areas where you made mistakes and you put some residential as commercial you might be mixing up these scatter plots and so these scatter plots might not have these really good separations but because you have these good separations you can make a good signature file that will be able to you to be able to look at the spectral information for each pixel and categorize it based off of the categories you chose. So because I like this the categories, this the, the separation I saw there, I'm gonna to want to go ahead and make a signature file. And so you can see the button here, create signature file. That's gonna save that file, uh, GSG file, um, that I can use later for classification. And so I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And all that does is it's gonna go through and find these different kinds of band ratios to say that this category forest looks like this type of signature. So I want to do a maximum likelihood classification. There's a lot of different types of classifications out there and ArcMap's not even the best program for this. Uh, there's a lot of different programs out there like Erdos that do a lot have a lot more options but um, for our situation here trying to work in ArcMap a maximum likelihood classification is a very good one. So I'm going to go ahead and run maximum likelihood classification. And again, anytime you want to know anything that's going on, you can always check out um, Tool Help. And actually, ESRI's Tool Help is quite impressive. It tells you a lot of information about how the tools work. And so I would check this out and even uh, look at these more in depth articles that ex it shows examples and how you can convert things over and so forth okay so <clears throat> so once I have that maximum likelihood classification uh, wizard going on here this is where I need to select some things and so I want of course to classify my in, um, my MTL file here my input signature file that's when I saved I can go find that GSG and now all of a sudden I have that saved I want to put where I'm going to put my um, output which I'm going to save here I'm just going to call it um, um, class, classy image. Why not have some fun? And um, I'm going to leave the other uh, other uh, values here 
um, by default, but you can check them out and depending on your area, these are all going to have different kinds of, of ideas. Like you can try out different different uh, settings to see what gives you the best. Also, I want to um, limit what I'm classifying just to the area of interest that I have. So I can go to environments and then under environments I can check out my processing extent and processing extent will allow me to go here and choose the um, same as AOI. And whenever I say same as AOI, basically it's going to limit it to what's going on in this shapefile, which is, you can see here, this red line that I have on my screen. And so I hit OK for that. And then whenever I have all my settings, I go ahead and hit OK. And so that's going to process now. And what you can see here is you can see the globe turning. And then you get this not so good results. This is not the result I was wanting. I got a classy image with only one category. So something went wrong. So sometimes things go wrong. And so if I look here and open my attribute table, I know that I don't just have one count of, I have many different values. So something I'm thinking happened with my uh, signature file. So let's go ahead and close that. Classy image was a bust. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Um, maybe one problem that I had is that I didn't have this one turned on. So I'm going to try remaking my signature file with that turned on. See if that makes any difference at all. So I'm going to go through again and create my signature file. And I say yes. I want to replace it. And then if I go to my classification, I'm going to go ahead and say maximum likelihood classification, input signature file, let's see if this opens up, and um, remember I'm working off the desktop, oh so maybe that's the problem, I used the wrong signature file because I was working off of this folder, and actually my signature file that I need to be working off is the one I just created which is this one. So this actually is a pretty good lesson because it shows you that when you make a signature file for one area, it won't work for another area. So anyways, let's hit open here. That's going to save that. Now that I've messed this up, I'm going to say classy image. I'm going to add number two at the end of that. Whenever I add number two at the end of that, I just know that I'm incrementing that number up. So the, the one with the highest number will be the one that is going to have my value, so I go ahead and hit save for that one, and then I hit OK. And so now it's going again. Here it is, image likelihood classification running. What's interesting is that I didn't have to go and reset my environments because my environment setting should, oh, well, actually, my environment setting didn't set. So you see what happened here now on my class image number three is that I ended up classifying the entire image. So again, I don't like that so much, uh, so image number two, so I'm going to probably do it for a third time. And so if I go back to my area of interest, zoom to layer, I'm going to say now classification, maximum likelihood classification. All the same settings, make sure I have that signature file from my desktop image class. And then my output now, I'm doing classy image three. And in my environments, I'm going to do a processing extent of my AOI. OK and OK. So now, third time the charm finally works. Went ahead and classified that image. And so what are you seeing here? Look at this. So I have here these categories. The colors aren't matching these original colors I had here because uh, it's randomly choosing colors. But I know that the value for one is forest. So this one is forest, for example. And so I can go through here and I can actually start s switching out the colors if I want to make them look more um, the way they're supposed to. So like, for example, blue for water, green for forest, or maybe I do a dark green for forest. You know, I can do things like that, or I can just leave it whatever color I feel like leaving them as. But just remember that these numbers are going to be corresponding to these values here, so you need to remember which one of those values were which. Um, what's kind of cool also now 
is that I can open up attribute table and I can see the number of count of pixels. And so you, here now I can start saying, hmm, what is my dominant uh, land use? It's going to be number value number five, which was residential. So residential has uh, 327,000 pixels, while value number four, which is agriculture, has 146,000 pixels within this. I can do this for multiple years and I can start seeing how things are changing between agriculture or residential or commercial based off of what's going on in here. These are very useful for doing stuff like deforestation studies, for example. One thing I like doing is I like taking these values now, um, selecting them all, and then um, copying the selected features and then going over into Excel. What's nice about that is that Excel would be able to actually make some cool charts. And so if I go here now and, um, well, some reason it doesn't want to copy. Let's try that again. Um, okay. Copy selected. So you're going to do it. Paste. Yes. And so now here I can see I have these um, values here. And so I know my value one was a forest, my value two was water, my value four was agriculture, no, residential. Residential. I can, you know, I just looking back at what I did here. Oh, sorry about that. I'm just looking back at what I did here. So number six is commercial. Residential. Number three was, uh, oh, sorry, number four was agriculture. Agricultural, and then number three was a grassland. Okay, and so now what's interesting is I can take these two, let me move this over, and once I have that, I can say insert a pie chart. And so this is kind of cool that you can start doing things like this, or of course it doesn't work now. Let me try this again. Typical computer. You have to do things over and over for them to work. So insert pie chart. Still not doing it. Okay, not a problem. Let's try it like this. Insert pie chart. Yes. Okay, and so right now our only issue is that the values are showing up as and see what's happening here under series options. No, legend. No, so there's a way to get this labels to work. Oh, yeah, so I need to say select data and then here label range. And the labels are these. Okay, there we go. And so here now. I have this cool pie chart that has these labels that show what's going on up here and what's most important. And I can even go through here and add these percentages. And so I can see that residential is 39% of my land cover in the area. And I have here 0%. Uh, I'm wondering what 0% showing up as. I guess that's supposed to be the water because so little water going on, which makes sense here in an arid environment. 17% agriculture, 13% of of commercial and 17% of forest. And so I get an idea. Imagine you go to an area and say, what is the dominant land cover? Well, here it's interesting. Our dominant land cover is residential. Anyways, that's how we do this. We, uh, to, to do image classification arc map, you see it's pretty quick um, and uh, painless. Uh, you download your Landsat image from, from the internet. It doesn't have to be Landsat, it can be um, Aerial photography it could be any kind of image you want. What you do then, you go and do their training sample, uh, start uh, drawing these polygons out for the different land cover areas that you're interested in. 
Um, once you draw all these different polygons out and you group them up by different classifications, you check that scatter plot, make sure you have good separation. If that's true, save this into your file, and then finally run the maximum likelihood classification or the classification of your choosing. Um, and you might have to do it a few times to get it to work, but once it does work, you'll end up with a classified image like that. So that is uh, doing image classification in ArcMap.